John Waters' book is called Mr. Know-It-All, The Tarnished Wisdom of a Filth Elder. Out now, his exhibit, John Waters Hollywood's Greatest Hits. You can see it in LA. The, the gallery is called uh, Spruth Meggers, Spruth Meggers. And uh, Ricky Lake is a superstar who just got engaged. And uh, I'm so excited. Your hair journey, <laughs> man. She's doing her Tracy Turnblad wave. That's for you. That's I know for you, that Andy. was for me. I, it's my favorite thing. God, I have to assume, John, when Ricky walked into that audition, I have to assume, I mean, she so was everything you were looking for, right? Yeah. She was Tracy Turnblad, exactly. But the thing I want you to remember always is how great Ricky is in all my other movies. She's yes. really a good actress that I wanted her to get back to more because people forget the talk uh. show was so famous and such a hit that people don't look beyond that. She's really a good actress. Just take each one of her roles in my movies. She's really believable mm. and really, really good. So true. Mm. John, John, will you make another movie, please? I'll, <laughs> I'll be happy to go back to work. Yeah, yeah, I just write books now. Sometimes I'm, we'll see, we'll see. I still, they pay me to write them, they just don't make them. John, do you, yeah, so that's the question. I mean, will we get another movie from you? I have to think you have some great ideas percolating. Well, the books do just as well these days, and also they do better, and uh, I get to tell stories. So, and it's just me. I don't have to go raise money and have, t you don't have test screenings for books. Imagine if you did. John, Alex Z said, considering Divine was once such a fan of hers, did you ever get a chance to meet Elizabeth Taylor? I did meet Elizabeth Taylor. I went to her house with Johnny Depp and Tab Hunter uh, to a cookout. And I went over to her and told her how much I love the movie Boom, which is one of the biggest bombs she ever made. And she was actually angry at first. And I said, no, I love that movie. I present it. And then I realized she looked like Divine a little bit. And the end of her life, you know, she served candy and hot dogs just like he did. And, uh, and Divine <laughs> always wanted to meet Elizabeth Taylor. He was obsessed by her. He even smoked Salem cigarettes because she did. And Elton John had it hooked up where they were going to meet and something happened and the flight got canceled. But Elton was really great. He always wanted to have them meet and they actually never, ever did. Wow. And of course, in Elizabeth Taylor's house, who doesn't look at her medicine cabinet? You know, but she knows ah. that. So all in there were just all her products, you know, Elizabeth Taylor perfume and all. Mm. And what you should always do is you put marbles in your medicine cabinet. Yes. You so then you know who's... Opens them, they all fall out. That's of Amy Sedaris has said that too. So you she looked in again. you looked in Liz Taylor's medicine cabinet. I did. You but did. the bathroom for the guests was not the bathroom no. where her tweezers were, I don't think. <laughs> uh, Ricky, Madeline B wants to know if you knew you were going to be name dropped in Megan the Stallion's song uh, Money Good beforehand, or was it a total surprise? Total surprise, yeah. Uh, that always happens. There's been many, many songs that have mentioned my show and my name, and no, I did not even, I, someone else told me about it. And I was going to say, it. your name, you have been name dropped in a lot of songs. I remember several times hearing your your name, it's so fun. John Brooks H wants to know the craziest thing you remember about attending the Manson trial. Oh God, I try to be very serious when I talk about that because I think some of the people that were there have been in jail for 50 years, they've been paroled and the, and the governor won't let them out. So I, I'm not gonna crack any jokes about it. Um, yeah. Just be glad your kid never met him. Oh God. Did you like Once mm. Upon a Time in Hollywood, John? I did. I did like it. I'm a big fan of Quentin. We're friends. And uh, yes, uh, I did like it very much. And, and the ending was so startling. And if only that had happened. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah, it was. I liked the movie very much. I liked all his movies. I'm a big fan. Erica D wants to know, Ricky, how intense was it to keep the secret you were a contestant on The Masked Singer? Oh, it was intense. And I had sciatica during that time, too. So I could barely walk and I had to wear that giant costume. It was super fun. It was very silly. I, I, the woman who booked me on it, Dina Katz, she assured me it was going to be this massive hit. It had never been on before. And lo and behold, it was this massive hit. And uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. That being said, I'm now remembering that you spilled the beans to me in my living room one night. 
I did. Yeah, I you, did tell you, and I wasn't supposed to tell anyone. Yeah, you weren't. I was the worst <laughs> secret ever. Eva L. wants to know, Ricky, did you notice Kathy Lee Gifford's son-in-law's bulge when you competed against him on Celebrity Family Feud? <laughs> Why didn't anyone tell him his package was on full display before going on camera? Okay, I did not. I did not notice at the time, but it was so hilarious. And I just want to say, we were robbed. Right, <laughs> you were. Um, my nanny's school, Marie's school. My nanny and Ashley <laughs> at the school for. Oh no! She lost out on. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, John Arlie S wants to know one thing we'd be surprised to know about your longtime friendship with Patty Hearst. Hmm. I don't think you'd be anything to be surprised. I think she's a good actress or I wouldn't have used her over and over. She's a good comedian. Boy, she can do stunts. Let me tell you, when when Kathleen <laughs> Turner punches her, she takes that punch better than the <laughs> best stunt man ever. So Patty and I, her, it was her birthday yesterday. We're still we're still very, very good friends. Uh -huh. And her dad offered to pay you to not put her in the movie, right? Well, I think they were pretty angry when she first made the movie. They said, why would you do that? I know why she made movies with me. Who wants to be a famous crime victim? Right. You know, this way yep. she could she could run with a new pack of bad people and not get in trouble or not have to be brainwashed or anything. So she was, everything she said was the truth, you know. She one, got a raw deal. One of the things I love about your, um, your book is you tell the story behind a lot of the um, colorful characters from your films, like the egg lady uh, from uh, Pink Flamingo. Uh, from, yeah, no, Edie. female. Yeah, she was trouble. in Pink Flamingo. She was in lots of. Yeah, yeah, she was yeah. in a lot. Of, so, how did you find her? I found her Sue Lowe and Vincent Perenio, who were in my films, and did uh, Vincent did the production design. She worked in a bar in this like really bad neighborhood, and the everyone lived in. And so we just went over there and she was the barmaid and I put her in multiple maniacs playing herself. Audiences liked her and just like Hollywood, I gave her a bigger part in Pink Flamingos. Audience loved her. And she went on to be in all the movies and, and she was an outsider comedian. I think that's the best way to put it. Um, and what about, uh, what about um, Hatchet Face? Oh, you know, unfortunately she's no longer with us, Kim McGuire. She was great, you know, um, and I have to give a lot of that character's fame to Van Smith, who did the makeup in all my movies, yeah, because yeah. Uh, because he really drew that face on. I mean, she wasn't a classic beauty, but she certainly didn't look like that. And we didn't know how to advertise because we didn't want to say an ugly girl. Oh, so we just I remember, you know, John. Oh, my God. When you did what? the casting for that, you said I remember the casting call for that. You wanted the yeah. face of a goddess and the, the, the body of a goddess and the face of a mule. <laughs> well, I think we lightened up. I think finally said a girl with an extreme face is proud of it. And even for hairspray, we didn't say we were looking for a fat girl. We said we were looking for an ample. Oh yeah, you did. Oh yeah, you an did. ample girl. A fat girl did who I? Dance. That was the call I got. A fat girl who can that's dance. Was, let's see. And that's why I didn't like later when they would say she's not fat. She's like ten, 10 pounds overweight. You know, we, Tracy needs to be fat. Not a little overweight. Uh, Not as my mother used to say, a big bone girl with a glandular problem. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Uh, what, uh, Ricky, what do you remember about working with Johnny Depp on Crybaby? Did you have a crush on him? I, I had a crush on the guy that played his best friend, but he was great. He was like a brother to me, and he played my brother in real life in, in the film. And I, we had so much fun. There were so many night shoots on that film, and we, you know, all lived in a hotel. And he would bring out his guitar. He was amazing. He was really, really lovely to to work with for those four months. Wow, John Julian C wants to know who did the best and worst job at camp at the 2019 Met Gala. I mean, did anyone even get it? Do you think? Well, to me, camp is it's weird because I love the Met. I think it's a great museum. But camp is being so bad you don't know it. Right. So how can you do that when it costs ten thousand dollars and you're wearing fifty thousand dollar evening gowns or Halloween costumes? Basically, it's a hard way. It's a hard thing to do. I would ever say the word camp out loud. It's like for old queens and antique shops talking about Rita Hayworth movies. 
Oh, you tickling me. Uh, Ricky Davis O wants to know one piece of direction John gave you during one of his films that made you do an abundant double take because it was just so out there. Oh my God. No, he would give me line readings. Like he'd say, no, you're not saying that. <laughs> yeah. Say it like this. <laughs> like, I know. I was guilty of that early in my career. Yep. Probably put these roaches in your hair, bitch. <laughs> that was definitely a low point for me in the film. And actually in that scene after when I get thrown in the paddy wagon, I remember they had me actually handcuffed. I was 200 pounds and they threw me on my back <laughs> multiple times and I'm screaming, ow, ow. And I was really in like, it's horrible pain, but he didn't care. He needed to get so, his shot. <laughs> so what she's saying is Hairspray was a snuff movie. <laughs> John, Martina G said there's an iconic photo of Keith Haring waiting among fans to get your autograph after the Hairspray premiere at the Waverly Theater. At the time, did you have any idea that it was him? And did you know he was a fan of your work? You know, I don't remember when I knew who Keith Haring was. I've seen that picture and it kind of amazes me. At that moment, I probably didn't put it all together, but I knew about the graffiti artists and everything, but that might've been earlier. I, I don't remember, but I love that picture. It was very, very sweet. And I'm still a fan of Keith's. Did you ever, uh, did you ever uh, consider <laughs> or discuss working with Madonna on anything, John? No, I never met her either. One time she called and sent me tickets to her show in Washington and I went but when it was over, it was such a traffic jam and everything that I never got backstage. So I, I never have met Madonna. No. Mm. Um, Ricky, any th I'm just so happy about your engagement. And you got engaged, yeah. naked in the jacuzzi. And I cannot wait to see the house in Malibu. I'm so glad. Uh, so I you're in, huh? I'm in. We that was the first night we moved in, so it's been a week now, and it's bliss. I mean, I just I feel like I'm walking on air. We're pinching ourselves. We're so happy, and I cannot wait for you and Ben to come out. Uh, well, I want to thank both of you. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you, John. Uh, get thank John's you for having book, me. Mister Know It All: The Tarnished Wisdom you. of a Filth Elder. I love you. Love both. you too, Ricky. I love both of you. I love you so Bye, much. Guys. Bye, guys. Bye, Ricky. Bye, all. Bye, babe.